So as you can see, this lesson looks at how to do bullets right. And if you look online, you'll see lots of advice. Much of it is going to be relatively similar. And a lot of that advice is going to be things like don't use bullets at all or don't use any bullets, don't use actual bullets on the screen. And what I want to say from the outset are a couple of things. One is that bullets are sometimes very appropriate, and that's what I'm talking about here in this lesson. And the other thing I want to say is that when you do bullets wrong, a lot of times it's not really your fault. A lot of the templates that are included with PowerPoint want you to use bullets. In fact, you have to remove the bullets from the slides you're designing. Let me give you a quick example of that. I've got this slide deck open here, and this is a template that's included with PowerPoint. It's called Margie's Travel Template. And if I go and add a new slide, let's just add the very simple one of title and content. And notice here that if I start to click and add text, so if I just want to say, here's point A, let me spell it right, and here's point B, Notice here that the bullet list is created with or without my input. It just, it's part of the template. So if I don't want these things to be bullet points, I have to go up here in the paragraph and remove the bullets. So once again, just be mindful of that, that most of the templates that you'll work with, PowerPoint is going to try to create bullets whether or not you want them to be there. Now, in terms of doing bullets right, what am I talking about? What am I referring to? I'm talking about this right here. It is entirely appropriate to use bullets when you are conveying group membership, when you are showing chronology, or when you are trying to communicate an order of importance. And sometimes these things are communicated on the same slide, as you'll see here in just a moment. What I want you to also understand about bullets is that they are lists. So if you have a list of things that need to be together for some reason, then it's entirely appropriate to use bullet points. Let me give you an example that we've used throughout this course. If I am giving a presentation on exam objectives for the 77 729 exam, and I want to show these exam objectives, insert slides for another presentation, compare two presentations, insert comments, then what I am communicating to my audience is that these things belong in a group. So if I am designing a slide, I might design the slide this way. Now this slide deck in particular is using the integral template. And so what I want you to know about the integral template is that even though this list here is bullet pointed, if you look at the paragraph, you can see that it is indeed bullet point, but it's a custom bullet and the bullet is transparent or missing. But still, it's a list. It could be a bullet point list, although I would argue that the lack of bullets reduces the visual clutter, which I think is a good thing in this slide. But again, here we have an entirely appropriate use of a bullet point in a presentation. Now, in terms of how I would then move through these bullet points to an audience, so let's say that this presentation, unlike it was in the course, in the course I just demoed each of these things, but let's say I was giving these as talking points to a live audience. How would I move through these bullets in my bullet point list? Well, there's a couple of ways I might do it, and I might decide differently depending on the venue or depending on the audience. But one way I might do it is just to make each of these their own separate slide. And maybe I would combine it with the use of some transition. I don't certainly don't have to. So in terms of doing this, like I might do something like this. I might go, here's one bullet point, here's the next bullet point, compare two presentations. And you can see that I've left the placeholders there for visual reference, because when I moved the text up that used to live in the bullet up to the title, I wanted to put it about the same place where the title was, but I also wanted to keep the font the same. And so what I end up at the end result is a presentation that might look like something like this. Here are the exam objectives. Here are the four exam objectives that you need to know. Now let's talk first about inserting slides for another presentation. Now let's talk about comparing two presentations. And so I did that with just a morph transition in this first slide and then a fade transition to the other points in the bullet point list. Now, another way that I or you could move through a very simple bullet pointed list is to do something like this. Here's the four exam objectives that you've seen before. 
and then I will show kind of importance or emphasize one while leaving the rest remaining as a visual reference by just simply emphasizing the text. So I make the text bold here and I make the text transparent there in that bullet point. And so now just simply duplicating the slides, I can go there, there, and so on. So now I would do something like this. Here's the exam objectives. Here are the four exam objectives that we need to be mindful of. And then now let's talk about this first point in the exam objective, inserting slides. Now let's emphasize comparing two presentations. Now let's insert comments and you get the idea. So in terms of how to execute something like that, well, you know how to make text bold. You go to the home tab and you make text bold. How do you make text transparent? A little bit more difficult to find, but if you remember this little format shape button in the home tab of the ribbon, it brings up the format shape pane. And then if you select text options, you get to the transparency options there. And the nice thing is that once you've set one of your slides up, it should be very easy to duplicate a slide. So I'll do control D to get to my fourth bullet point here. And now what I'll do is just use my format painter to do that. And then again, use my format painter to do that. And do I have the same transition as before? If I've duplicated the slide, the answer should be yes, it's a fade. And so now let's move through the slide deck like so. Compare two presentations, insert comments, review comments, and we're done. So pretty easy to execute. I try to keep in mind that not everyone has two weeks to spend putting 20 slides together. They need to make a slide deck and go on to the next thing they've got to do in their life. And so these are very easy and simple and design wise, they work really well and they will help orient your audience and communicate your message. The bottom line from these examples here are these are entirely appropriate uses of bullet points and these are ways to do bullet points right. So hopefully next time you are putting together a presentation and need to communicate group membership, show a chronology, or demonstrate the order of importance, you know how a few extra tools in your bag of tricks that will help you out.